and good morning Facebook I'm trying to figure this out this is a little different than what I'm used to uh, good morning everybody uh, Dan is not here Dan is uh, suffering from a stomach ailment um, now I don't even see myself it flipped up so there we go now I'm, I can see myself um, I just want to make sure I'm in the camera shot uh, so uh, keep Dan in your prayers um, if he was feeling it yesterday I, I'll tell you when you're not feeling well and you try to preach it's it's rough uh, because your mind tends to go elsewhere obviously he didn't seem like his mind was elsewhere um, and so uh, some of you on uh, that are watching I don't know if you can notice but I am mic'd. I have to do this from now on because of my voice my therapist said um, quit using your teacher preacher voice just use a normal conversation voice so this is gonna be a, a, a new learning curve I know people like Mel which we have a number in the congregation that have some hearing difficulties that's going to be a, um, a learning curve also um, so um, we're learning to do new things let's begin with a word of prayer most gracious Heavenly Father we give you thanks again as we gather together uh, in your word uh, as we finish off this year and get ready for the new year uh, being in that word is so important especially as we hear in the lessons um, that are coming up some of them we will entertain today some of them will come next week uh, but it is so important uh, not to just be in that word for that momentary period on a Sunday morning but to be in it constantly and to gather together with others for it uh, so thank you Heavenly Father for this opportunity that we can gather uh, and, and again, as, as we look forward to how you are going to use that in our lives, uh, so that not only that we live it out, uh, being shining lights, but also that we speak it out and, and declare it so that others may know. So guide us and lead us in our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will entertain Lead Us Not Into Temptation at the beginning because it really moves into the next parable. Um, uh, as I was studying this morning as we entertain time with um, and again I'm going to emphasize what I did last week really that you can stop at your kingdom come Be because that's really what that prayer the Lord's prayer is all about the Lord's prayer is they're asking for his kingdom to come into our lives and as it comes into our lives then through us it should be going out into the world and so really that's that's the sense of that prayer but it, as I said last week the other petitions really show how that lives out in our lives how do we live how do we live that God's kingdom is in us has come to us but through the provision of daily And, and and as as we do that you know as I shared last week as as we provided for those people in Kentucky uh, th that is what we are called to do it's not just okay God thank you for my daily bread but okay how can I steward my resources for the sake of others well first of all what's the first sake of others is in your own household you know caring for those around you the, then the then the next one would be your church uh, then the next one would be your immediate community then the next so the circle just keeps going further and further out as you as as you say you know give us this day our daily bread but as we can give that daily bread to others um, then forgive us our sins obviously if, if we're going to provide for physical needs for people we also want to provide for their spiritual needs and what's the greatest need that we have spiritually forgiveness uh, and living in that relationship with one another um, and then we get into lead us not into temptation so Jack <laughs> you said you said you had some questions with this one um, and, and and again just as 
we stumble with forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us you know there's that struggle with that uh there's also oh, lead us not why are we we he doesn't lead us into temptation okay i agree god does not lead us into temptation it's as god doesn't tempt us right but i told you i started a book this morning no well, must have been a christmas present no, it was just something oh, okay. online that I, I, I come across in their devotion today. Okay. That's uh, Struggling Through Life Storms by Greg Laurie. Did, of, you, did you pay attention to the sermon yesterday? Did you watch I did. it? I okay. Did. Yeah, I did. okay. And I was thinking, okay, God doesn't tempt us. I understand that. Right. God may allow us to be tested. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway, the author used an example of Joseph, which now I'm questioning my understanding. Mm -hmm. He used the story of Joseph, you know, being in the pit, you know, uh, being accused of, you know, uh, attacking Pharaoh's wife and, and was put in prison and all this. And he's standing before his brothers in Genesis and he says, you know, don't be afraid, don't be worried. What you did, okay, he says, God sent me here for this time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if God sent him to Egypt, then how do you explain all those things that happened to him? Was that a testing? You, you see what I'm, I'm getting... I'm struggling with, no, God doesn't tempt me to sin. Because he doesn't, sin is not part of God. Right. Okay. How does that work? I, I'm just struggling with that this morning. Go ahead, Gene. Well, God does allow us to have trials. Yes. And if you go back to the Greek, the original Greek translation of this one, it could very well have been translated, lead me not into trials. Yes. And as a result, but it also can be translated into temptation. But you find in several, you know, I found that in several commentaries talking about the translation to help understand this. Because I was, I was like you for a long, long time until I started researching that it was God doesn't lead us into temptation. Why is that line there? And then if you go back and dig deep enough, you start to find it. And then if you start to go down that trail, as you did, Jack, <laughs> if you start to go down that trail, it helps you to understand it better. But trials then can lead to temptation. No, I understand that. I, so, and I agree with that 100%. So, no doubt, no confusion. God will well, well, allow us, us to be trials. trials. Then the devil uses the trials to present the temptation. Because one of the temptations is, I can fix this myself. Now you're getting, that's really where it, we have to get to the, the crux of the petition. Okay. Is look, looking at how God treats temptation and trials and how do we treat temptations and trials what too often happens in our mindset whether it be a temptation or a trial what too often is our mindset what can i do to fix this what what can i do to and and, and, and again and again, with the temptation, it's it, it's it's that that carrot that Satan dangles in front of us, which he knows he knows the carrots that we like, you know, yeah. Don't dangle a carrot in front of me because I'm not going to go for the carrot. Donut, a cronut, a cronut. <laughs> That's a whole different, right? Be, because well, and 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 isn't this time of the year one of those difficult times that because we have so much of that uh, savory sweet kind of food around us that we over partake 
And then we hit the new year and go, you know what my new year's resolution is? I'm going to go on a diet. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, it, 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 and again, God knows that Satan is going to do that. But as you say, God also allows the trials to happen. And whether it be a temptation or whether it be a trial, either way, can we handle it not by not ourselves? Not by ourselves. No. And, and, and something, Gene, as you were talking, and, and this just popped in my head, and, and may, maybe, maybe, again, Luther always, Luther always tried to look at the commandments and, and the petitions, not only in the negative viewpoint, but also in the positive viewpoint. So the negative viewpoint is, God, don't lead us into temptations. We know he doesn't do that. But also if you kept in your mindset, don't lead us into temptations, meaning don't, lead, don't get us there and then leave us. Right. It, it, so, so, instead of, it, so instead of thinking of it as lead us not into temptation, which is, yeah, we don't want him to do that, but instead lead us through temptation. Because only he can get us through through oh we can we can think it sometimes <laughs> I, I i know the best answer for this and sometimes the best answer we do know but sometimes ha haven't you had a situation where you tried the same thing from from a previous experience and the second time it didn't work <laughs> so so some so, so, so in in those because again, we, we fall prey to, okay, it worked one time, it's going to work again. And when it doesn't work again, we go, ugh, there I am relying on my own strength again. Go ahead, Mel. Mel? Uh, yesterday, uh, came to church, brought my little concentrator with me, left church, Marilyn and I thought, that sister's got something to eat. I'm really feeling good. I'm really feeling good. I prayed the Lord twice, maybe three times, to help me. Uh, as the day wore on, I felt better and better. My reading improved. Uh, uh, and I thanked the Lord at least two or three times. And I felt so good about it. I even texted Jesus <laughs> and, and told him about it. Yeah. And uh, so. He helped me. I'm not helping myself. It's all the Lord did. And 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 to if, to take your situation a little further is you, you you get a little confident with that, a little cocky with that, and go, I don't need this. <laughs> oh, anyway, that's that's my story. Right, right, and 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 that's where you've got to go. Thank you that I have this device that God gives to me yeah. that I can and number one not take it for granted but also not take it to the point where okay I, I, I've gotten what I need out of it I don't need it anymore yeah. it, it's, it's just like what, with what I have to learn with my voice you know um, I told the pastors last week when we met I go it's been, it's been rough not preaching I love to preach I love to proclaim the word, and, and and so sometimes, sometimes something is, and this is really the sense of trial. Sometimes something is taken away, so that we can get back to the glory of God, and that's why I'm saying it, it comes back to Thy kingdom come. Right. Sometimes something is taken away, that that we lose sight of God's kingdom. The first petition. Right. And, and, and the first commandment too. Um, and, and that's really then I think, um, uh, does anybody else have a comment or a question on that? Well, I just want to finish up with that. When I got more to take my shower, the swelling of my leg went down, the color had dissipated some. Awesome. And uh, I just really feel good. You know, so it just, and I thank the Lord again. Yep. 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 That's part of daily bread. Yeah. It's also part of a trial. 
Yeah. Well, and, and, and really, these three petitions to me, the daily bread, the forgive us our sins and lead us not into temptation, leads to the parable that teach, Jesus teaches next. Keep in mind those three petitions, daily bread, forgive sins, and lead us not into temptation with the next parable. Uh, if somebody would read verses 5 through, what is it, 5 through 13. What chapter are Oh, uh, chapter 11. And he said to them, Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Do not bother me, the door is now shut, and the children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though, he will not get up and give you anything because of his, because he is a friend, yet because of his imprudence, he will rise and give you what, it, and give him whatever he, he needs. I tell you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent, or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Okay. So go to the parable, uh, verses 5 through 8. Daily bread is mentioned in there. That's the crux of the of the parable, isn't it? Here, here, here uh, a, a visitor comes to, the, you know, it, it's the neighbor. A, a visitor's been on a long journey, and it was the the host of the house who was suppo supposed to provide a meal. So you're dealing with daily bread, and he didn't have any daily bread. And this is why I said the daily bread is not only providing for me, but providing for those around me. And so here's that petition coming to light. He could not provide the daily bread for this guy who has come on a long journey. Forgive us our sins. Again, you know, we don't know. Did he know that this friend was coming? You know, it said, you know, a friend of mine has arrived on a journey. Did he know that the friend was coming? If he did, if he did, he wasn't prepared. You know, so, so, so in, in his sinfulness, he, he, he wasn't ready for doing what he needed to do. Oh, that's not a sin. Yeah, it is. Be because again, you're, the petition is you're not providing for your neighbor um, with, with that. Um, but then comes lead us not into temptation. How many of us, if somebody came knocking on our door at midnight, would answer the door? Um, he did identify himself he even said friend and and again here here's where you need to know the the cultural context you need to know the cultural context because if and and let's take Blairsville if if your neighbor down the street in, in, in your neighborhood need something and they came knocking on your door it was also your responsibility to assist them but because his guest was your guest also even though you didn't know his guest you know even if you didn't know his guest you know it, it was just sort of the community's responsibility that when somebody was in need to take care of, because it was a reflection upon the community. Um, 
and and so likewise when when things happen in our community that's a reflection upon us also uh, in that same cultural context so here's lead us not into temptation because he, he even says what what does he say about himself this guy that's you know he's got this guy knocking on his door at midnight and what does he say It, it will be a great, it, not only him knocking at the door will be a great inconvenience, not only having to dig through his pantry will be a great inconvenience, but they're already bedded down and more than likely they're all in the same bed. So guess what? I'm going to have to wake up my kids in order to climb out of here. So I'm going to, in, I'm going to have to inconvenience my whole family family lead us not into temptation lead us through temptation because it's so, how easy is it when that phone call comes at two o'clock in the morning to let it go to voicemail um, and, and and so so here again providing for the daily bread for another uh, the the sinful behavior, how it c can impact us, or how how it might impact us, because it would be awfully easy to say, you know, this is an inconvenience. And and notice, <laughs> and I, I I enjoy this is friend, lend me three loaves. So you can you can see that this guy was not prepared whatsoever, um, and and he goes further. I have nothing to set before him. His pantries are empty. You know he can't even cobble together something. Um, but why does he give it to him? No. And, and really, Gene, you did this earlier. When we go to the Greek, that word impudence. You know, I, I, d does anybody else, anybody else's translation have a different word? Okay. Now that's getting closer. This is verse eight. Yet because of his impudence, Typically, I, I know when I hear that, when I hear impudence, that's not a good thing. That's not a good characteristic. Well, impudence. impudence. When I hear that word. Um, Right, and and I think that's what we tip, that's what we typically hear, but if you go to the Greek, uh, that must is that the NIV? Uh, yeah, I think it is. Uh, the NIV uses boldness. Boldness. Also in the second. And, and and really, if you go uh, literally with the Greek, is because of your lack of shame. And 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 so boldness really carries it carries it much stronger, um, and and. What we what we have, and again, and we'll we'll pull through this the whole section. We're getting a comparison to God the Father out of this. You know. So in real life, the neighbor, the friend who has traveled, is asking him, his friend, who's he's knocking on the door. The friend who has had the traveler come into his house. Is knocking on the door 
And because of his lack of shame, because of his boldness. For, for knocking on, on the neighbor's door. Right. It's given him. Okay. Right. I don't know that I could have done that. But ask not have no shame in asking because I would have been I would have been ashamed that I did not have anything in my larder for something to come by. I wasn't prepared. I mean, in any way. And who? And whose door is he knocking on? Remember, this is a parable. Right. So really, this is this is the look at at God the Father. I'm going to be ashamed that I didn't take care of this myself. So. Because I'm ashamed, I'm not going to go to my father for right. it. Right. I see. I see where you're going. Yeah. Yes. And 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 so this really has to has to help us to see God responds to us out of our need. And 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 again, not, notice what He calls Him when He comes to the door. Mm-hmm. Friend. He He's recognizing a relationship here. Okay, and and because of your boldness, because of your lack of shame, because of your willingness to realize, no, I wasn't prepared. In my sinful behavior, it it would be just as it would be easy for the man to stay in his bed because it's going to be inconvenient. Well, is God ever inconvenienced? Likewise. We should not feel shame to go to our Heavenly Father with those things that we need because, again, getting back, Jack, to what we were saying about lead us not into temptation is realize because we want to do it ourselves. And it's the realization, I, he realized I can't do it myself because I have nothing. That's me and my relationship with my Heavenly Father is I have nothing why we go through the trials or why God puts us through these trials to get us to that point where hey, we don't have anything to get happy about God. You know, Joseph, I think a lot of what he went through is built with confidence and preparedness that maybe he took over Egypt and was able to take care of his father. And, and, and when you go back to the story, Joseph had an ego problem yeah, because, of, because of the coat. Because of the coat, he had a big ego problem. Yeah. Um, I've been telling the stories of the dreams, but I mean, it's really obvious, you know, he was lying it over his brothers, and my dream said, you're going to bow down. Right. <laughs> right. Lead me through temptation. <laughs> yeah, w- w- which I think then really helps then for us to go, if we understand that parable, now listen... Because too often this next part of it we misuse it, the the prosperity gospel. What did you call them? Um, Rolex preachers. <laughs> <laughs> or jet plane preachers. <laughs> uh, and, and 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 so really this and 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 I think I think. When we hear this, we have to put it in the perspective of, okay, if I do this, then God does this. No. God is God. I have nothing. All I can do is ask, seek, knock. Because I'm, I'm incapable by myself. And, and, and I, I, th- I think it's very interesting is if you listen... Notice the three actions. They progress in their persistence. There's an increase of persistence with each one. Asking is not as active as seeking. So it's texting, phone, (laughs) knocking at a door. Is that pretty good? Yeah, yeah, b- b- because because texting there's there's it, it's it's you're not you're not really as relational as a phone because now you're hearing the voice. Now going to the door means now we see him face to face, 
Right. Well, it, it's it's the same as as what I say, said with the three degrees of um, serving. We can write a check. Okay, that's that still can be used to serve somebody. Okay, we can like we do with the Christmas angels, have to go to the store to purchase something so it's a little bit more involved. Or we can participate in the actual event, seeing people face to face. So so likewise with our serving of people, we can do the same thing. That might be the three levels of age too. How so? And that when you're younger, you do a lot more of the physical service. As you get older, it's okay to go to the store. You gotta do that. But then you reach a point that physically it's very difficult to do the first two things, so you can write the check. So that's what I mean. It might be the three levels of age. No. 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 Well, well, and that that would be leading us into temptation is being satisfied that okay, if I write the check, I'm I'm doing what I need to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you never feel satisfied. No, 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 no. But but are there ways in which we can be physically, personally involved with someone even in an older age? Right. Right. Uh, even even writing a note. Writing a note is a, is a much more physical thing than a text message, even though it's the same kind of thing. But a handwritten note is, is much more personal. Um, and so you get this, this progression of ask, seek, knock. Um, uh, and, and, and again, the word that jumps out to me because it's been jumping out to me the last several chapters is uh, verse... 10 for everyone who asks receives this is all about receiving how do we receive the goodness of God and, and, and we receive the goodness of God when we realize that God is the giver and, and I think all of these then and, and it progresses the one who seeks finds the one who knocks it will be open it's not a formula that, okay, if, if I progress in this, that God's going to give me what I want. No. God gives me what I need. And, and, and that's then where we leap into the third part of this, is then the, the comparison of, of uh, what a father would, would do. Um, what father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? What father is going to do that? Yes, right. And, 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 and in the Greek, there's a play on words there because the word fish and, and, and serpent are almost exactly the same. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't work the same with, with egg and scorpion. Right. It doesn't work the same with egg and scorpion, but it does work with fish and, and, and serpent. If he asks for an egg, gives him a scorpion, you wouldn't do that. And, and so we know the goodness, and, and again, where this falls apart is those people in this world who their father does do those things. Are there fathers who do give a serpent instead of a fish? Who give a scorpion instead of an egg? There are those fathers. And, 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 and this, is, this is why where we need to pull out of this context is this is not telling us about our earthly fathers. This whole section tells us about our heavenly father. Because just as, just as your neighbor will do the things that are good for you, just as your father will do the good things that are for you, God blows it out of the water. And, and that's where that last point comes in. If a father does these things, if, um, if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give? Yeah. And, and, and again, remember, he gives us what we need. What, what's the greatest thing that we need? 
is the Holy Spirit. Seek ye, and Dan, I think, used this last week. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Oh, didn't we just pray that? That's really what this is really trying to amplify for us is this is the kingdom coming. This is how the kingdom comes. And, and yeah, we should be asking. We should be seeking. We oh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. We should be knocking. Um, yeah, and that, that's another one of my pet verses that, that gets misused. You know, Jesus standing at the door knocking. Yes, he does come seeking us. Right, he does come seeking us, but... Um, you know, I found Jesus. Oh, was he lost? <laughs> I didn't know he was lost. Uh, uh, but, but go. okay, this parable, and I understand everything you said so far, and I agree with you. But also, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you have my permission to be nice. Uh, I also look at this where the Lord has taken us and focused us on earthly things, the food, the bread, yeah. okay? Okay. And then I have to take <clears throat> the who is the bread of life, the Christ, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. And so he's taking what we understand as, as physical needs mm -hmm. and then turned it right back on us and said, don't focus on earthly needs Christ is the bread of life the Holy Spirit is really the focus of this parable that the Father is going to give us the good thing not the things that we think we need the needed thing if we go back just to you know in the last chapter with Mary Martha's story the needed thing the needed yeah so it just it's a little deeper for me to to get my focus off of the bread, the physical, you know, Lisa's bread, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I saw the pictures of the cinnamon bread. That, that, that I know that's good. <laughs> yeah, it was just a deeper, you know, get my mind off of this, of the ideas. Okay, Naki, yes, I'm going, I'm going to the Father. I'm going to be bold. I'm going to continue to pray. But I'm not going to focus on the things of the world. I'm going to focus on the spiritual things that I need. And and how did that play out a couple days ago for some people? Yeah. Not very well. Do, 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 do you think, do you think there, several questions, do you think uh, in some households there was an explosion of consumerism? Absolutely. I mean, do you, do you think in some households there was disappointment and not receiving what they wanted to receive? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and well, you know, and, and, and again, it goes back through. It goes back to what you started with when we go through those storms. Mm-hmm. We, we can, we can, you know, as Lisa said, we can look at me, myself, and I, and just go. Or, as we heard yesterday, don't look away. Look to, look to, um, look to the one who provides. Um, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be yours as well. Um, so yeah, I, I think good point that yes, it, and and it's so it started with your kingdom, went to the uh, personal things that we need in the petition. Now the the parable points out the personal things that we need, and God brings it around to His kingdom. His kingdom. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Um, Anything else there? Okay. 
Next section, Jesus and Beelzebul. If somebody would read 14 to 23. I will. Now he was casting out a demon that was mute. When the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the people marveled. But some of them said, He cast out demons by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, while others, to test him, kept seeking from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and a divided household falls. And if Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say, I cast out demons by the elder But if I cast out demons by the elder by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather me with me scatters. Okay. Talking kingdom still. Um, but, but now we have the introduction of the anti-kingdom. Um, the, uh, the others who are trying to can't really say there's enough is, there's, there's I, I, you know this is where I wish Dan would be to be the heretic is there another kingdom? And that's part of where I'm going is, you know, if you go back to creation, there was just God, okay? And everything else is created. Um, So, does Satan have rule? I got the board. Does Satan have rule? He does what God allows him. And, 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 and thereby my question, that's why I wish Dan was here because it would be an interesting discussion, is, is there another kingdom? Be, be, because to have a kingdom means but God allows him but it's still not to that's the, and, and that's where I, I, I wish Dan was here that we could have this discussion because and, and, and Lisa I agree with you and scripture backs us up with this is you have authority only because what? God gives it to us. Does Satan have any authority over what God allows him to have? Right. So there's only one kingdom. There's one king and that's, and that's I mean, when Dan, 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 please, come on. <laughs> God. He still rules over it. Right. Correct. And that, and that's where I'm going is, is there any other kingdom except the one? Well, Luther says there's a spiritual kingdom and a worldly kingdom. 
the two kingdoms. The two, the well, two kingdoms, okay. And, and, and I, I would... But, but God still rules over both of those kingdoms. And, 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 and I know Lutheran theologians try to back off from using the kingdom language to using the realm. Okay. There are two realms. Yes. Okay. One kingdom, two realms. Two realms. Uh, well, with that. That's how when, when Jesus was crucified and he to death, that shows right there that God's absolutely in control of it all. You know, that, that's the ultimate. Right. So that's right. 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 And, 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 um, so so again, there has been an intrusion on God's kingdom. It, when we pray for thy kingdom come, is his kingdom here? Yeah. But but as Luther says, is let me realize that kingdom in my life. Let me let me realize it in my seeing, in my thinking, in my spirit, in my heart. Uh, I I want it to be fully realized. Now, granted. Can the kingdom be fully realized in our lifetime? No. Right. It can't be fully realized in our lifetime because there's another influence that is out there creating havoc. Why we pray then lead us not into temptation. Because we know that there's another influence, another power greater than us that is having its impact. And yeah, we move right into it and... and, and Jesus brings it out. Now he was casting out a demon. That was I, I found it interesting. That was mute. Because we've had demons before that weren't mute. And and the ones that weren't mute. Oh, no. Right. They they professed who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. And and so this one was mute, so it wouldn't be professing who he is. Uh this is all this is this is gonna profess who he is. Uh, and this leads then into Jesus being able to profess who he is. Uh, because he said, you know, because the, the people see it, they marvel it, marvel at it. Um, are they happy with it? Are, are they happy? No, no, no. No, this isn't a parable. This is actual. Right. Yeah, they're, they're not happy with it. Well, and, and notice it says, while others to test him kept seeking from him a sign from heaven. He's casting out demons. <laughs> I, I sent you a rowboat, a motorboat, and a helicopter. What more do you need? <laughs> and, 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 and this is why we pray thy kingdom come because can our foolish blindness keep us from seeing the kingdom it does it's my kingdom it does yeah yeah and, and and so they had a sign but they kept asking for a sign from heaven and 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 i think what jesus explanation already says is this is a sign from heaven because he said um, if I'm casting out demons why would Satan why would Beelzebul cast them out because aren't aren't the demons doing his work that makes no sense it makes no sense because if if you're casting out the ones who are doing your work What's going to happen? What's going to happen to your authority? They're going to dissipate. Yeah, um, that's why in in Acts, uh, Acts chapter four or five, um, Peter and John are brought before the Jerusalem Council, and they are told not to speak. Um, and and that's the the great where where. Peter says, you know, we, we must obey God rather than men. And they go, they, they want to go speaking. And then Ananias uh, stands up and um, he says, well, you remember this guy? This guy did some things and suddenly his followers disappeared. And oh yeah, this guy did, 
did something and his followers disappeared. And he basically said, you know, if this is not of God, leave him alone because it's going to do the same thing. But if it is from God, you might be finding yourself battling against God. So leave him alone. And then they whipped him and beat him and let him let him free. <laughs> uh, but but it's, you know that's what Jesus is saying is you know if if I am oh and 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 the thing he adds on to you know if 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 I'm with the kingdom of the Elzebul, why would I want to cast out the ones doing my work? Secondly, oh, didn't your forefathers cast out demons? Then if I'm of Beelzebul and your forefathers cast out demons, what does that say about your forefathers? You can't have it both ways. I like that it took it on further. What does that say about you? Mm, mm -hmm. Because again, for them heritage was highly important. And so if 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 I am of Beelzebul because I do this, and your forefathers are of Beelzebul, well your forefathers yeah, you might still disagree with me, but your forefathers did these things. What does that say about you? Right. Um, and then, uh, 20. But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Yeah, but... Do you find it interesting if the finger of God, how much strength is in a finger? Not as much as the fist. <laughs> right. right. I, you know, think, think about in our own bodily thing. If, if, if you hold a 20 pound weight by your finger, how long can you do that? Well, and, and, and that to me is what, and this goes back again to realizing our impetus, impetusy. Well, that's a reference to God, I mean, that's a reference to God's power, power and it's not the first time it's been used in the Bible. Right, I, it's, it, I was going to say, it's, it's, in, it's in the Old Testament. Yeah, it's in okay, it, and probably has to do with where, where, is your reference? Do you have a reference there? No, I don't. I would presume it has something to do with with the Exodus eight, probably probably in the sense of either the plagues or right before the plagues, where he comes to Pharaoh. Would would say and and so imagine yes, our fingers aren't powerful, but just imagine the finger of God, the power in the finger, and and if it's just the finger of God coming against you. We should we we should be uh, realized, and and so we get then into the the twenty one to the end of that section. Who's the strong man? When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are safe. Think of it in the context of what he's been speaking. Again, this is kingdom language. Who's the, who's the strong man? When a strong... And, and follow it through, because then you get the comparison. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. So who would be the strong man? Satan. Satan. Beelzebul. It, that's, that's the comparison he's making here. Remember, the comparison is between him and Beelzebul. Okay. Okay. I never the, saw the, it. The, the, you're, you're making the, you know, again, we're, we're trying to speak kingdom language here. Whose kingdom is it? It's God's kingdom. So, 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 so if somebody, somebody has control over a certain area, over their realm, and somebody more powerful, somebody stronger than comes in, 
do they have the power anymore? No. And, and, and so you have Beelzebul, you have Satan, who, who is having his realm. He's the guardian. He's, right. He's the one that's guarding. He's, 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 guard, he's guarding, guarding those things that are, that are his. Because, because he, has, he has enticed them. Lead us not into temptation. But let's, let's keep that context going. Lead us, thy kingdom come, lead us not into temptation because that leads us out of the kingdom. You know, so if he's guarding those things, only one stronger than he can take them away. And how does he do it? Without the armor of God. Nope. He is God. Right. He, he's, he takes away the armor. He's taking away Satan's armor. And how does he take away Satan's armor? And how did he overpower him? Push it. He went to the cross. He went, he went to the cross. And that's what he's saying here is Satan has his power in the realm again by the authority God has granted them but when one stronger than he attacks him, didn't we see a lot of attacking between Satan and Jesus? Started off with his ministry in the wilderness and overcomes him. Yes, he finally overcomes him at the cross. And at that way, he takes away his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. He's taken back his own, um, and then whoever. And this is critical. This is where great ending point. So critical now. This is again keeping this in the realm of of kingdom language. Whoever is not with me is against me. Whoever and whoever does not gather with me scatters. And this was this was a sermon way early in my ministry. Um, that it, it, there was um, there were two fields separated by a fence. One was Satan's. One was Jesus's. And, and so you you you've got you got the sheep on in one pasture. You got the sheep in the other pasture. Um, and, and, and so there, there was one sheep that wanted to get a little cute, ended up sitting, climbing up and sitting on the fence. And so, at, so Satan comes and rounds up all of his sheep and takes them off to hell. Christ comes and gathers up all his sheep. And there is the one left sitting on the fence and so a few moments later Satan comes back and motions to the one sitting on the fence come with me he goes I'm sitting on the fence I, di I didn't choose one side or the other <laughs> Satan says the fence is mine and that's really what's happening here is Jesus is telling us is there a fence? No, there's no or not. Right, there's no middle ground. How many people are living in this world today as if there's a middle ground? No. I'll pick some from this faith tradition, I'll pick some from this faith tradition, I'll pick some from this faith tradition, or, or the ones that, you know, I'm living a good life. But doesn't that go back to what we said? It, you know, it, it, it's relying and trusting on my wisdom, relying and trusting on my abilities, relying and trusting on what I can do. That's Satan's pasture. And, and, and we've got to go back to being the one that realizes I cannot, I've got to trust in the one who can.
and the one who has, and the one who's done. Um, and, th and that's why he says, if you're not with me, you're against me. And then, uh, he whoever does not ga gather. So now, now he's speaking, oh, by the way, we're going to get to them, the Pharisees. Yeah. Anything else there? How'd I do today? You did really well. I was going to talk with you after, but you, I had to boost you up, say no was good. And if you Bo boosting up, up is good. The gain I had to raise the gain, which if you do this on Sunday. That's good. You're doing well, I, I don't have the inflection that I normally do on Sunday, so. Like I said, if you do when this I on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, but I'll have some inflection, so. Okay, he's preaching Friday. You're, that's right, Friday. No, I'm not doing Sunday. Okay, Friday. Sun, Sunday is Dan's last one. I will be here Friday. Man, I got a whole week. I got the hand signals down. <laughs> I mentioned to my therapist that you talked about having a red light up in the back, and she liked that idea. <laughs> Jack said he was going to put a red red light up in there, and he'll flip the switch on <laughs> to let me know. <laughs> well, let's let's close with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. And, and we pray thy kingdom come. Uh, let, we know that it is here. We know that it is in our midst, but sometimes it's uh, in our sinful behavior. Sometimes it's in our blindness, our stubbornness, that, that we don't realize it. Uh, but continue to, to bring it to us in word and sacrament. Continue to bring it uh, to us through the people that you gather us around so that we realize that your kingdom has come that we are part of that kingdom and as we will see next week that we need we need to also be uh, visible uh, actors in that kingdom and so guide us and lead us in those endeavors uh, we pray for the opportunities that lay before us uh, as we finish out this year and prepare for the new year we pray this all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Amen, Amen. and we will say goodbye to Facebook uh, have a happy new year. Uh, if you can be here, we've got worship on Friday, five o'clock. Uh, I will preach and it will be with Holy Communion. So let us go and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.